So if you haven't watched my last video, which I do highly recommend for a sort of change of pace to my normal videos, Anyways, in that video, I go over the whole story of buying a $3,000 vintage Honda and this purchase and really how I feel about it. And also my owning and riding the old Triumph 500 got me thinking it would be cool to make a video on affordable but awesome classic vintage motorcycles for you guys to consider if you're maybe in the market for an old bike. I've made loads of other videos about what it's like to own and ride a classic motorcycle and even videos about why I think it might be a better option for those of you who like retro bikes. I'll link a few playlists below in the description, but for now, let's jump in and look at the 10 best vintage or classic motorcycles that you can buy for under $5,000. And just so you know, this is just, these are just examples, right? I know these are not the absolute best. This is just my opinion on some really cool bikes that are affordable and also classic. All right, first on my list is actually the bike that I just bought an early to mid 70s Honda CB500. Now you should know that for some of the bikes I'm looking at on this list, you might not be able to afford like a pristine example, like a perfect original, say 72 CB500, or maybe a fully restored one, could cost you upwards of $10,000 or more. But a bike like the one I just got, mostly original, in pretty solid running condition, can be found for under $5,000, depending on where you're at. Many of you are asking the price for this one, and like I said, this CB500 was $3,000. I bought it privately, it wasn't like an auction or from a dealer. Anyways, this is a great way to experience the wonderful first inline force from Honda. These bikes are super reliable and they're not quite as expensive as the CB750s. They run like new bikes, honestly. They're almost as fast as the CB750s. They weigh a lot less. The brakes on this bike are are so much better than my old British bike. This bike feels better than a lot of new bikes I've ridden. It's just so smooth. Like when you're in second gear, just putzing around and you let off the throttle, it's not jerky at all. Like you can cruise around, like do a U-turn in second gear and it's just so smooth. But once you get into the late seventies, these inline fours, I mean, they're still great bikes. They just, in my opinion, have lost a lot of their classic appeal. So if you can stay in the early to mid seventies for this, I put this at number 10 to get it out of the way, obviously, because I just bought one, but this could easily be at number one. All right, number nine, another really cool option that could end up a great investment would be an Ironhead Sportster. And really there's loads of options here. Once you get back before AMF took over Harley in 1969, they can get a bit pricey, probably tough to find, for example, a mid or early 60s Sportster for under $5,000. But I've seen quite a few mid 70s Sportsters in that price range. There is a red one available right now in my area, and it's been there for a while for like $5,000, and it looks pretty solid. The Ironhead engine from Harley is one of the best sounding engines they've ever built, arguably one of the best sounding V-twins of all time, as some people pointed out in my video on the best sounding bikes. Some people would say that you should shy away from Harley's during that AMF era, and maybe they're right, but it's really the only way that you can get your hands on a real classic Harley for an affordable price. Early Sportsters are getting really pricey, and the Ironhead platform, in my opinion, is the next one to skyrocket. I think it's already starting to go up, but it's gonna go way up in the same way that the Panheads and Knuckleheads and Flatheads have. So these are really cool bikes, a little finicky I've heard, not always easy to start, but man, they've got a lot of soul. All right, number eight, the Honda CT, maybe the CT70, CT90. If you wanna get into the old motorcycle collection game, there's arguably no better way and no better place to turn than to Honda's little single lineup from the 60s and 70s. Specifically for me, the Honda CT90 and 70, these aren't the trail bike versions like the ST. I think these are cooler, but you know, it depends on what you're doing. My dad actually bought one for really cheap they put a new carb on it. I think he only spent like $800 or something. But yeah, they cleaned the carb up or they put a new carb on it and he cleaned up everything else on it and sold it for quite a bit more than he bought it. A really nice one can run you over 3000 or more, but I honestly don't think that it's a bad investment even if you do have to spend a couple thousand dollars to get a nice one. It is crazy to think that these can go for more money than my CB500 I just bought. <laughs> But man, these are great, fun, reliable little bikes. Great for kids who want to get into riding. But honestly, fun for anyone. Like, these will haul around a full-grown adult. All right, our first British option at number seven. If you want something really, really old and really British, look no further than the little singles from BSA, the BSA Bantam specifically. These were in production for like 20 years. BSA made an absolute crap ton of these. They're probably the most reliable, simple British motorbike that you can get. And for me... It's a fun, accessible way to get something British from before the 60s and 70s. 
Once you get back into the 50s and 40s, it's tough to find anything British in this price range. Note that these are two-stroke engines, so if two-strokes aren't your thing, then steer clear. These are about as two-stroke as it gets. And they're not going to be a whole lot faster than a Honda CT70, unless you get one from the later years. They were quite a bit faster in the late 60s. But these early ones from like the late 40s, early 50s, yeah, they don't go much faster than 45. But again, it's not about that. And for sure, this is a fun way to get a truly ancient little British bike. You can find an early 50s Bantam in really good condition for under $5,000 or around $5,000. And that's a 70-year-old motorcycle that will run and be simple to work on for the most part. I'm not sure how difficult parts are to find for these. But yeah, I've got to think these are a good investment at this point. I think they've already started to go up in value. All right, we've got another old British single for you guys. But this time, it's not a two-stroke. I wanted to include an old British four-stroke single that's in this price range, and I'm going to go with the Triumph Tiger Cub. This is the bike to get if you don't want to spend a fortune, but you want something that has that classic Bonneville-esque look. It's amazing. These are real baby Bonnevilles. Of course, they don't have the power and they don't have the sound because they're not parallel twins, but they still sound amazing, and man, they just, they're just about the cutest little motorcycle you can get from this era. So a nice Tiger Cub or Mountain Cub will run you close to $5,000 at this point, depending again on where you live. Like if you're in the Midwest and you're willing to ship it, or you know, you're willing to drive out and grab it, you can get these kind of bikes for so much cheaper. But if you're on the coast or especially the West Coast, these kind of bikes in really good condition can still be relatively expensive. But yeah, if you want a head turner that's really affordable, this is a great option and even more simple to work on than the bigger twins. All right, number five, I'm gonna go with a 1970s, like early 70s Triumph Daytona. Most of you know that I own a late 60s Triumph 500. In my case, it's the T100C and just for perspective, my bike was 6,800. So a little over the $5,000 price range that we're at here. And that's why I've actually gone with the early 70s one because I think you can find a pretty nice you know, 72, 73 Triumph Daytona for about $5,000. In the early 70s, they had added quite a few things to make this bike better. This is the best version of the 500 that you can get is those last few years in terms of reliability and just like features. So if you like my bike or you really like Bonnevilles, this is the route to go if you want to get something pretty affordable. And I'm sure a 72 or 73 Daytona, you know, that is in mint condition is going to be well over $5,000. But you could certainly find a nice runner that's mostly original for, you know, under 5K. I think there's a lot of people asking way too much for these at this point. So, you know, if you can haggle with people too, that helps. But this is the next year and model to start to skyrocket, in my opinion. These are going to start going up quite a bit, all these 500s, as they're getting pretty rare. And people just can't afford to get any of the ones that are from the 60s, really. They sound amazing. They give you that Bonneville experience. You know, they're pretty much just as powerful. They're really lightweight, really reliable if you take care of them, and they have that great classic styling. All right, number four, a 1950s Galera Sport. So if you want to get something Italian, much less Italian and vintage, you're going to be hard-pressed to find something for under $5,000 unless you go way back to the 50s and you look at some of those early single racers from the Italian companies. And in this case, I'm going to recommend the Galera Sport. These are racy, red little single-cylinder motorcycles. They're super, super awesome looking. I think they look amazing. They've got loads of character and speed. They weigh just over 200 pounds, produced about 7 horsepower, could do about 60 miles per hour, and man, they just looked the part. And unlike many early Italian singles, these are actually four-strokes. I know I get a lot of hate for that, but I, just, I prefer four-strokes, okay? The sound is better, the lack of gray smoke, I, I don't know. A two-stroke does smell good, though. These can be found in great condition for about $5,000. You can get rougher ones for less than that, for sure. The only thing to look out for with these is the rare, like, European bikes that are really old. You might struggle to find parts. I'm honestly not sure how difficult it would be to source parts for a Galera. And that's why most of the bikes I've included are either British or Japanese bikes. But yeah, these are pretty cool. All right, number three, the Honda CBR250RR. And if you watched Fortnite's most recent video, then you know what I'm talking about. I know some of you aren't into sport bikes, and maybe some of you wouldn't say that this is a vintage bike, but it technically is at this point, as these are like 30 years old. This bike was made in the 80s and the 90s by Honda. They're not that powerful, but they sound like they are. That's the simplest way to put it. The CBR250RR revs to 20,000 RPMs, as Fortnite points out. It's about 5,000 more than the top performing leader bikes today. 5,000 more RPMs than an F1 car. It's essentially a baby MotoGP bike 
with all the sound and feel and none of the actual performance. These are starting to go up in price. I mean, they have been going up for a while. Seems like they're really popular in Australia and other places. I did see one for sale here not that long ago. I think it was like 7K. So my, importing them might be the only way to go. I don't know. But yeah, these are really cool. All right, number two, the Honda SL125. If you want to get an early sort of dirt bike enduro motorcycle with that classic early look and you want a four stroke like I would, then I would go with an early 70s Honda SL125. These bikes are just beautiful in my opinion and so cool and still affordable. You could easily find a nice example for under $3,000. This bike is that ultimate like scrambler machine. You know, you could take it off road, but it's really more of an on run bike. They're a bit heavy. We had a really similar bike to this. I don't know if it was an SL, but when I was a kid, we had a 70s sort of enduro-y dirt bike from Honda. I think it was a 200 or a 250, but it looked just like these, and they're really cool proper motorcycles. So yeah, definitely check one out. All right, number one on my list, again, another Honda, the early 70s Honda CB125. You cannot go wrong with these. They are bulletproof. They look absolutely beautiful. They're super small. If you haven't seen like a 73 or 75 or 71 Honda CB125 in person, you have to just see it. Like on videos, they look, I don't know, they just look like the other Honda CBs. But these are this small little version and they're just so perfect. They're exactly what a motorcycle should be. And they're such a great first classic bike, not only because they're affordable or simple to work on, or reliable they're also so lightweight and maneuverable that it almost discounts the fact that these brakes aren't near as good as modern brakes because they're just so light so they stop on a dime the cb125 produces a good chunk more horsepower than honda's current 125 like this will hang with a grom all day a bit less torque obviously but more power overall and come on there's just no comparison they're cheaper than a grom they're going up in value to me this is a no-brainer they really also aren't that much less reliable than a modern motorcycle. Sure, they're probably less reliable than a modern Honda, but I would say an old Honda CB125 is more reliable than a lot of non-Japanese modern motorcycles. Like these things will run all day for you. And that's why the CB125 is at number one. If you're looking for a vintage motorcycle that is affordable, it's not gonna cause all the headaches of so many other classic bikes. It's gonna be easy to work on. You're gonna be able to find parts, no problem. Go with the CB125, you won't regret it. All right, guys, the point of this video is so much more than just my recommendations. This will be one of those videos that you watch, but you also scroll through the comments while you're watching because that could be the place where your bike lies. Many of you know so much more about vintage motorcycles than I. Some of you have tons of experience riding all sorts of awesome vintage bikes, and you know the prices. So let us know down below if you think there are some other vintage bikes that are awesome that you can pick up for under 5,000. So, until next time, ride safe.